I can't help but laugh at the irony of using hog riders against Synthay, the hog master himself, but what the heck is this wizard doing? Like, seriously? Seriously? Attack the storage? Come on! 16 teams remain in the upper bracket of the Clashers Cup, and the match that we're going to be watching today is none other than Tribe Gaming versus Imperium Titans, with Tribe running a 13.75 star average compared to Imperium Titans 12.75 star average. This is bound to be one of the more offensive wars we see in this Town Hall 15 defensive meta, but this is what everybody has been waiting for. Let's see if they can get it done here with Alm Wallen kicking us off. It is going to be a Yeti Bomb with a Queen Walk supporting next to it, and he's going to have Hog Riders to follow up afterwards. Is there a very difficult oh, right out of the gate there goes the queen ability a little bit uh in or a little bit uh overly patient you want to say yeah to drop those healers there and he waited a bit too long and it ended up burning him but now as he puts so much faith in this queen charge he will be diving the queen towards the town hall the king will go to the outside and set the funnel here by clearing out the defensive king electro titan out there as well a lot of investment in that funnel here but this queen has her work cut out for her. Needs to keep her alive. It's going to be very difficult without her ability. Does catch a bunch of traps right there. And even more with the king dropping the phoenix on the other side. Traps there. The eagle artillery is activated. So the queen is under threat. She got the CC pull earlier. So at least she doesn't have to worry about that. But we'll do it all. Oh. Oh. Goodbye, queen. Let's gather up some percentage, and it looks like the defenses from Tribe are going to shut this down. The Queen died there, but the Queen was able to get all the traps cleared on that charge path. So if he was able to hold on to his ability, very likely could have pulled through there. Now with the higher average hit rate, Tribe will go in next. Dragons and Inferno Dragons mixed together. He'll be dropping in a clone super minion bomb i assume here trying to go after the air defense the inferno and the town hall and negate the rage tower there's a very strong option on this style base new meta defensive setup and he's able to clear out a lot of he got all of his primary targets and he's able to use that baby dragon to finish breaking the ring of trash and then the dragons and inferno dragons mixed together now this is an interesting mix because usually we see either electro dragons super dragons or all inferno dragons but regular dragons are not really meta right now so it's very interesting that he decided to mix them together on this that's the tornado trap the tornado trap may cause some troops to veer off path a little bit uh, oh, they're all dumped out of the trash on the right side. That really, really is going to complicate the funnel that he's already formed there and make it very difficult to have the punch to go into the defensive world champion and the defensive queen up top there. But still has a strong force moving with the main pack still going forward to the defensive CC building. Does not want to pull it. I don't know if anything of significance has come out of there. Okay, he did get the queen inside the range of it. So if there was something in there, it did deploy at some point. He's able to deal with it. Dragon up top there, locks on to the scatter shot, but goes down. He invests the freeze into it. The queen's stuck on the wall. But he does end up getting the defensive queen out of the way. But at least he made it that far into the base, taking advantage of the larger HP pool of the dragons. But now it'll be up heavily to this royal champion to continue to power through. Unfortunately for her, the king goes to Phoenix and transfers both of these expos over to the royal champion. At least one of them goes to the royal champion. I guess the other one went to the diggy there, huh? Our champion has a work cut out for her. one more dragon still surviving. He needs to go to the archer tower first. It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Our champion will fall short, and this will climb all the way up into the mid 80s. War starts off tied. Both teams with a miss, but percentage advantage into tribe's favor. Now Kingsman will dive in with an electro titan smash attack. He's got the lightning. And he has enough lightning that he can take out an expo. Or a scatter shot. Or the monolith. But he would have overkill for an inferno, so I highly doubt he's gonna be going after one. Gordon will be tanking. Wait, what? He. <laughs> 
Well, what's the plan with the other one then? Why, why bring six? Okay. Okay. Let's see what he's got. The Warden Walk is able to get that expo out of the way after he tanked it, and the Flame Flinger is able to lock onto it. The Town Hall is activated now, so the Flame should be able to take it down there without any difficulty. Electro Titans and the Ice Golem make their way to the base. Does he have a wall break for that? Here it comes now. And then a little bit further there, and the Ice Golem will pop and freeze up the defenses on his entry. Now the Electro Titans take over those healers there. They hit the rage. Good, good execution so far. Sweeper's not going to heal his back there, but they're staying locked onto these uh, Electro Titans. Keep it under defensive ice golems, freeze them up there. Lots of damage there. The healers are frozen up as well, but they do come out of it. And another rage on the healers. That's his last rage. Now there's a rage tower on defense at the backside of the base here. Needs to get the de defensive queen down. He locks onto her now, but the Giants are stuck attacking the walls right now. Probably continue to attack walls after this. Maybe they all die. Looks like they're dying out there, so it's going to turn into a queen charge now. Got uh, Roar Champion up on the left side there, going into the Monolith. But the Phoenix there getting some extra tanking. And then the Diggy steps in and gets the stun. Queen getting cast the top off now. Flame Flinger is up missing right there. But it does have enough fire on the ground. The Town Hall will still go down. No issues there. He might swill to throw, but then go right in the Town Hall. Poison ended up dying out over there. He's got the Headhunter with Electric Titan in there fighting out the King. And that's not going to last forever, though. But he will get the defensive King down and... Make sure he's not going to cause any problems for his world champion later on. But the queen takes the scatter shot. Looking okay here. He pops the RC ability. That'll sweep out some of the backside defenses. He'll get a bit of a regrouping. The queen leads to charge. She picks up the expo. That was huge right there. There's a queen outpaced the world champion for just long enough to get out in front. Freeze up the damage that was coming in on her. And then the skeletons will pick up the taking on that in just a moment here. But Diggy gets the stun. And Diggy will pick up the tanking. He's got to close it out in time, though. Eight seconds to go. Gonna get through two storages. Witch is working. Wiz is working. Into the cannon. Turn north. And no! 98%. But down by 14 buildings. The bar is clearly set for Tribe Gaming. War is heating up here. Exocis will dive in next with a green charge into Hog Rider attack. Now this is the same attack that ended up causing all the problems and the low percentage for Imperium Titans at the beginning of this war. So, opportunity now for a tribe to set themselves apart and show that they can do it better. So the Queen is going to be making her way in towards the Town Hall. He's got some wall breakers here that he can use to open up the base a little bit wider. The queen gets the rage there, and here comes a hog guard. Two hog guards, actually. They go in here, get the CC pull. They do make it inside the range, and only a partial pull. Nope, I take it back. Pulls all the way to the hound. Has it under control, freezing up the headhunters. Does not want this queen to go to an early ability. May need some additional spell support when this lava hound pops. Maybe that poison will last long enough here, but the queen only has the expo on her, so I guess she is sustaining. Especially since the flame flinger was able to take that expo or the scatter shot off of her. I mean, or she wouldn't be able to reach it otherwise. Flame flinger is about to get targeted, but he quickly slips in a hog rider and then an archer all the way up the top there, which will give some distraction for a moment. And the hog rider and the fire damage as he gets the shot off. It is a shot in the air, but it is taking that strike. Queen able to secure the tile takedown down south there. A couple of skeletons are onto that flame flinger. Gonna pop it open, but the enemies will come out and quickly handle those and make their way forward. Here comes the hogs. The hogs are charging into the group of defensive heroes across the top of the base. Their early ward ability, lots of headhunters in the mix, and we'll get the defensive heroes engaged. But spring traps going off like crazy in the area. Lose a lot of hogs there. Headhunters lock on the defensive queen. They got the world champion down. Defensive king out of the way. But at the same time, his queen has dropped in the core of the base there and so she's not going to be around to support the raged up ground expos and multi-infernos. That is an enormous amount of damage. Needs to climb this percentage up into the 80s. I'm not sure that it has a chance to triple. But if he can get the percentage a little bit higher here, he should maintain the lead here for Tribe. And it does look like he will reach that threshold, but just by a small margin. Able to climb it into the 90s, and it is going to be a lead maintained for Tribe Gaming. This one looking to end at a 92%.
So we're looking at eight buildings in the advantage of Tribe now. Obviously, getting a three star on the board here will massively shift that. Impressive already that the defenses of the teams hold so much stronger than when they face the average teams that they were able to rack up averages of 12 and 14 stars. 12 to 14? Yeah, 12 to 14. Try hard, able to use that lightning to take out the Expo and the Inferno and Bomb Tower. But the Battle Builders will repair any other damage to stay in the area. And when you... It is wild to see the super high score wars. But when the big name teams face each other, usually the base building is on a different level than the average team. And so the triples are a little bit more difficult to come by. It just goes to show you the preparation of these bigger name teams compared to your average team being able to set up themselves to stop the meta attacks. Just one of the Titan over the left side here, gonna clear out the trash over there and collapsing quickly. Everybody joins in with the Queen and the Warden, and the funnel is set if they will go into that open, uh, that opening to the multi-inferno compartment, but he'll push his way into the defensive Eagle Artillery. And that ward ability for now. One jump does give him access to everything. Making sure the jump does not give him a way to lead out into this bottom area, making sure to push towards the Tadlock Farm, but it does put him in a pretty big crossfire upon the entry to the core, so... He gets in the crossfire, pops the ward ability. If you're on some of these defenses, getting one of these scatter shots off of his back would be very, very important right here. But he sends in the hogs out of the flame flinger. They just come out on their own, I guess. And then I thought I heard the Royal Champion play somewhere, but... Oh, there she is. Down south. Royal Champion moving from the very bottom. Throwing in rocket blues down there to support her. King goes to the outside of the base. Everybody else is going to sit inside the town hall poison for a moment. Titans hanging in there. Champion has somehow picked up the scatter shot tanking, so taking a bit less excess damage in that area. Looking good here, though. He's almost out of it. The king still has it. Wait, the king still has his ability. The king will pop that ability across the top of the base there. The queen has her ability as well. He's going to go ahead and swag both of them. Okay. Now. Now. Things are heating up. Try hard. Gets it done. And Tribe will have to triple if they want to sustain their lead. Rikiris will be sending in the Skelly Donut into Lalo. He needs to clutch this. He wants to maintain the lead for his team. Otherwise, they could swing the percentage and the stars. Let's see what happens. But the balloons will come in up north. And trim off an exterior archer tower. So the goblin paired with it, able to get the funnel set over there. Even throws out a wizard to further emphasize that funnel. Bane is gonna potentially go in there. I'm not sure that she does or not. Uh, up in the air there, whether she goes in or not. But you know what? With the opening there, actually approaching from the left side, we'll push her into the mortar, and she will go in. The golem gets out in front of her. Wait, ah, go in, queen. Go in. Okay, <laughs> she's in. All right, good, good. Good setup right here, Rikiris. That's a very difficult spot to squeeze that queen into. People will be very nervous to even attempt to get the queen to move through an open corner like that with so many potential targets on the outside, but moving forward, fearless as ever. Needs to make his way into the artillery there with the queen, and with her ability, she may, she may get distracted by the defensive king, and that could stop her from getting the eagle artillery down. But he'll go ahead and make the defensive king invisible. Pops his queen ability. Where's the eagle next? Hey, he's got a bunch of archers there, but he does deal with all the splash damage that would kill the archers. But the king down south there pushes in. And the queen. Not short of the eagle artillery, potentially. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. She might be able to pick up the Tesla and then go to the eagle and take all the damage. Oh my gosh, she makes it. All right. 200 IQ invisibility right there gives him exactly what he needs and the Lalo able to sweep through and take the town hall down while that was going on so, uh, multitasking but he seemed ready for anything now the slammer will move into the left side of the base he's got balloons that are collapsing into the air defense more balloons into the archer tower defense is going to stay standing okay just excess balloons that he had on standby there he just needs to mainly get the scatter shot down 
Love to see some light troops go to the outside and go pick up that, that air defense there if you can get in there. But he still has a world champion. RC ability will take it without any issue at all. And Rikiris answers the triple from Imperium Titans. And now, <laughs> I said this before, he's heating up. And it definitely is. Back to the same position. And here we go again. More Electro Titans from Imperium Titans. It's like they're living up to their team name here by running Titans, right? But he will send in this flame flinger from the very bottom of the base. See if they can get two in a row. Very clutch there for Tribe to immediately respond with a triple. And we're back in that position with eight buildings in the lead in the favor of Tribe. Whatever happens here with Imperium Titans, they want to do eight buildings better than whatever Tribe was able to get or is able to get on their next attack here. Before the Flame Flinger, I'm going to pick up the tanking of that mortar there right before it was able to be, or potentially going to be targeted. Under control. Flame Flinger is going to move off to the left side here and we'll keep on combing that left flank. The warden was able to comb the top flank, so. Everybody making our way right forward at the jump here. Rage Tower goes off. There's going to be a Poison Tower on the other side of the base there by the Town Hall. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Should stack pretty well with the Town Hall Poison and to heal right through it as long as these healers cooperate. Healers is in back a little bit right now. Needs to get them to be covered by the rage. The sweeper is causing problems. Sweeper finally goes down. Healers are way, way, way back, but they're going to lock out of the warden now. The warden can definitely receive that healing and make some use of it, but the Electro Titans are the ones that need it the most there up in the lead. The champion super on the top of the base there. Skeleton spells coming down to lock up the defensive queen, freezing up the queen, freezing up the monolith. All these Electro Titans have died out here. The Queen and the Warden are sharing the healers right now. King and the last Electro Titan, I guess there's one still standing, that is able to push through and get the defensive world champion down. That was a big pickup right there, but the defensive Queen still stands, and she was able to claim the offensive world champion. As they push past that skeleton spell, and somehow she survived. One minute to go here, still has a lot of force moving. Let's see these healers transfer over to the last main, remaining Electro Titan, but he does quickly power through the ground skills. The Queen has a path to leave out of the base here. He's got that baby dragon working up top. If that baby dragon survives and these archers also stay alive at the bottom, he should be able to finish this off in time. The Queen and the Warden definitely are trying to throw down south. And now these mortars are going to be doing some work on his remaining cleanup troops down. 30 seconds to go. Everybody's circling out. He has access to everything, but there's a little bit of a maze of walls. And this baby dragon is doing some work on the outside and is really speeding things up. It does not take any black air bombs all the way through. And Uryam will get another triple. Man, this is a slow start to this war. My goodness, is it picking up now? A lot of pressure now over to Kronos as he will be sending in Skelly Donut into Mass Hogs against Synthe. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's see what he can do. He will be sending the Bat Spell at the Monolith. The Skeleton Spells take the CC down. Kind of a difficult angle to do that at. But he was able to do it from that side which made so that the defensive row champion was made invisible. So if there were any stray troops that leaked out of the invisibility, it wouldn't cause the row champion attack in that to have all the skeletons aggro to the row champion and end up getting targeted themselves. So very, very important. Got the rage tower to trigger up by the town hall. And that leads me to believe that as soon as that rage tower fades, he will dive the heroes in. Very, very patient right there. And the heroes will now have a much easier time. Half the incoming damage and the ice golem freezing up the remainder of the defenses. But a big test of ours popped there. Ground skellies are in the area. He got the headhunter down. Able to get him through the defensive king a little bit easier here. But it's a uh, mortar down there is opening up that flame flinger and going to dump the strips out early. He has the hog red is coming out. But they're going to go inside them in range of the scatter shot. Uh, unfortunately, they're gonna go to waste outside of that. Definitely would have liked to keep that flame flicker a bit more protected, but at least he gets the town hall secured. And the main force there, the hogs, surge in from the left bottom side of the base, charging the rage tower. He's got two heal spells. He'll try to heal the damage coming in from two raged up multi infernos. 
Hogs are very tightly grouped up here, but he doesn't have any more headhunters for the defensive world champion to go ahead and freeze her. Rage Tower is still active. That other heal spell comes down to get him through the bomb tower and that multi inferno. We'll get it down here. Couple Hogs is still alive on the right side, but the world champion is split north. She goes invisible. She still has her ability. The queen is still alive as well. But he's missing a lot on the bottom side of the base here. He needs to at all. Oh, doesn't say. Maybe that is the right call. I was going to say maybe he wants the RCA ability to sweep across the bottom of the base here. So hold on to it. But maybe just taking out those defenses and preserving the HP of the Royal Champion was the better call here. Because now the Warden will keep on working with this Royal Champion. And it does look like with the Diggy, he's got enough and he will clean it up in time. All right, that's what we're talking about, guys. Warden continuing to assist with cleanup. Wait, what is this wizard doing? No, what? <laughs> okay, the queen's got it. Queen's got it. Queen, queen's right there. All right, that wizard definitely... What is this wizard doing? Why? Why are you... <laughs> it's okay. It's a triple. But it is also the equalizer again. Tribe Gaming. Gets another one, and we go down to the final exchange here. Still with Tribe, Guild, Tribe Gaming with an eight building advantage. Synthe going in with a skelly. No, no skeletons here. It's Bats Invisibility and Dragon Riders. What does he want to do with that? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> okay. Not a skelly donut. It's straight up Bats and Synthe. We'll be going after the Eagle Artillery, the Multi, and the Expo. And that is going to clear out some of the damage down south here and set up the heroes to get some huge value. But war on the line here. This war definitely has changed course from the beginning. And now we'll see how it ends. But it may rely on Synthe being able to get the triple here. King will pop his ability, make his way to the Multi Inferno. Queen up top there, able to move along towards the defensive world champion. The king was able to clear out all the targets in that compartment. And that worked very nicely. And I'm surprised that the, the queen came in up top there and went right into the uh, ground expo. But Rage Tower was triggered nice and early, so at least it's not doing double damage to him. Completely negating that Rage Tower for the most part. But the world champ will go into the scatter shot. The ground skelly popping. Goes ahead and makes them all invisible. Make sure that Royal Champion does not get distracted. Defensive CC pulls and is heading south, but actually, no, it's kind of all over the place. Derek can't decide where it wants to go. They retarget up to the Royal Champion. She'll pop her ability and she will tag the sweeper in the middle of the base. Not sure where we stand with this right now. They'll put in the blimp and the dragon riders to not go into the area that has been pre funneled. Interesting choice, but the blimp hits the tornado trap. Ice Hound travels out in front there, gets all the, gets the the one trap, I mean, <laughs> cleared as he makes his way up to the top air defense and open up upon arrival. Air Riders need to secure everything around the town hall and then avoid the town hall poison to go to the core of the base here. Flyscomb well, still running around here and he still has the defensive queen down south, but he will come in from behind the sweeper, freezing up the monolith, giving that ward a chance to survive. We'll save him right there, right before he went down. We'll keep on moving. Raise the monolith again, keeping these Dragon Riders nice and healthy. Put it in an extra balloon over the right side to go pick up this stray Expo. And we'll start, 42 seconds. He needs to get the Headhunters through. He doesn't have any ground targeting defenses in the area, so Headhunters will deploy, but they go right into the defensive King. He needs to shut that King down quickly and get over the Queen. He's in a bit of a bind there. That King is definitely throwing things off. We'll get him down now, and... Headhunters, unfortunately, are dying to the ice golems that were on them. So the defensive queen is going to stop him up. Oh, man. I wonder if he would have put the headhunters in on the bottom left side and just put him into a little bit more heat. But there's no ground targeting defenses in the area. So putting them into the defensive king really, really cost him. But I think it would have been a time failure the way. So... That's going to put the bar for Tribe Gaming to win this war at 80%. The war is not over till it's over. Yo-Yo23 will come in to try to close it out in the favor of Tribe. 80% is his threshold now. Bean will deploy and go towards the Town Hall. Flight Leaguer 
only in her left side. And is able to get her to take the turn. Okay. I was worried. I was, I was worried that the queen was going to the outside of that wall. But she will stick to the right. And she will go over to the Royal Champion. Or does she go straight to the Town Hall here? Which path is she going to take? I think she stays to the right. Yep, she does. Goes right into the Battle Builder. Into the Defensive Warden. Put in a Sneaky Goblin that'll go inside of the base there. And actually, when it comes out, it'll pull the CC. But obviously not going to get a full pull there. Be careful with the Town Hall activation and the Invisibility Tower there. With that uh, storage giving him a little bit of something to attack while he's waiting. Archers were able to come out and do the same. And the Town Hall looking to go down here. Nice control. A shaky right there, but... Keeping his composure. King will deploy him for the right side. A hog will go in while the king is tanking that arch tower. And archers will trail him behind, working the cleanup over there. Flame Flinger does get targeted by the defensive world champion. And out comes Yetis and Rocket Balloons. And with the headhunter support, we get the defensive world champion down. Good management. Lots of different things going on at the same time here. He's managing the king. He's managing the Flame Flinger. He's managing this queen charge. And he also got the wall break to push the queen all the way into the multi-infernos in the core of the base. But as soon as he gets there, this rage tower is going to activate. He's going to have two raised up ground expos on his queen. So her troubles are not done yet. The wall break gives her access. Loses the healing to a black air bomb. And the Lala will start to push in across the top of the base. But as soon as this rage tower goes off, he's going to be under a lot of damage here. The world champion does go down to the right side, but not before he got the defensive queen out of the way. Really would be a good time for... Activation, and he does use it. Also absorbing the Eagle Artillery Strikes there, freezing up. Uh, you need to use the freeze right then. Maybe could have delayed that for a little bit. And he's quickly approaching the required percentage, but he's not there yet. 76, 77, and he's got it! But it is not a triple. He's still got the air defense standing on the backside. He will climb the percentage up high enough, and that is a heartbreaker for Imperium Titans. Because they know they picked up the defense, and that means that if they were able to convert one of the other ones into the triple and not make the mistakes that they had earlier in the war, they could have won this war, but that is not the case here. And wait a second, this war is still moving. Warden could pick up the tank into that arch tower. We could have no time, but oh, there it goes. But my Warden, 94%, and the final score is 12 12 advantage tribe gaming, and that means. They're going to be moving on to the upper bracket of the Bastion's Cup. And Imperium Titans will be sent down into that lower bracket. And sent down in the earlier stages of this tournament means every round that still remains, you have to face two rounds in the lower bracket. So staying alive in the top bracket is going to greatly increase your odds of pulling through in the end. But then I guess we'll see in the end. We'll see who makes it all the way through. Thanks for watching.